Hello friends, I welcome you in my video and this video is the part 2 of our series which is based on Overseas Direct Investment New ODI Regime August 2022. In this video, we are going to cover the concept and the regulatory requirement with respect to Overseas Portfolio Investment. Uh, as we are aware that in the recently launched new ODI regime, it, it applies to both overseas investment, overseas direct investment, as well as overseas portfolio investment. Friends, I would like to mention here that uh, government of India, they have issued the rules and the Reserve Bank of India, they have issued the regulation and the direction with regard to new ODI regime. However, it may be mentioned that uh, since it's a just new launch of this new regime, so for to understand the concept of a particular uh, the topic or the definition, you have to refer all these three documents together. So what I have done, I have taken all these three documents together and I have taken all the relevant provision which is applicable for overseas portfolio investment for the purpose of easy understanding and uh, you know a better understanding of this concept okay so let's begin so let's start with the definition of OPI so as per clause number 2s of the rules issued by the central government the OPI means investment other than ODI in foreign securities but not in unlisted debt instrument or any security issued by a person resident in India who is not in IFSC. Okay, so as per the definition of OPI, OPI means an investment other than ODI in foreign security of a foreign entity. Okay. So in the part one, we have already covered the definition and the concept of OTI, but here I briefly, I would like to briefly mention about this ODI. So ODI, is, there are four modes of investment for ODI. One is unlisted equity, then subscription to memorandum of association, then 10% of more paid up equity capital, and then less than 10% of paid up equity capital of listed foreign entity, but but without control okay so these are the four avenues which are available for investment in odi so when we are talking about overseas portfolio investment so first is the criteria that investment other than odi okay so we have to exclude these four investment for the purpose of opi okay then further it says it does not include that cross I have put a cross here so it does not include unlisted debt instruments okay so the debt instrument is also defined as per clause 5a of the rules issued by the central government so uh, what what does mean uh, this uh, debt instrument basically these are the government bond corporate bond borrowings and other debt uh, security as per the definition okay so unlisted debt instrument does not include in the overseas portfolio investment okay or the, so that second thing is any security issued by a pri who is not in ifsc so friends this concept of ifsc i, I would like to just brief you uh, this concept because as you are aware that uh, uh, in our india we have now international financial service center which is located in gift city Gandhinagar. okay so it is uh, you know the scz or the international territory as per its jurisdiction so here there are two exclusions so first is unlisted debt instrument so debt instrument i mentioned briefly that government bonds corporate bond borrowings etc and or any security issued by person resident in india who is not in ifsc okay so these 
two things we have to exclude from the definition of overseas portfolio investment now there is uh, you know one little explanation given for this purpose but we will discuss it later but first let us understand what constitutes opi and overseas portfolio investment so if we go by the definition so if uh, first of all any investment other than odi okay so we are excluding those four investment plus further those two requirement which is given which is we have uh, already discussed so other than these two let us understand what does mean opi so first is less than 10% paid up equity capital of a listed foreign entity without control okay so if you have seen my earlier video there we have defined the overseas direct investment and there we have the fourth avenue of investment was less than paid up equity less than 10% paid up equity capital of less than 10% paid up equity capital of of a listed foreign entity okay so if it is less than 10% paid up capital of a listed foreign entity so that is covered that will be treated as opi then second is security issued by a person resident in india who is in ifsa so the in the exclusion at the second part any security issued by pri who is not in ifsa so any security issued by a pri who is in ifsc okay so here what is the meaning meaning is the investment investment funds or vehicle in ifsc so if there are any investment fund and the investment is made in the investment fund so the same shall be treated as opi okay so a security issued by a person resident in india that is in ifsc okay so the next next investment is investment in units of any investment funds duly registered by the regulator in the host country okay so it is any investment investment in units investment in units of any investment fund which is duly registered and regulated okay regulated in the host jurisdiction or host country okay so if this is the investment but this is not in ifsc okay so because we are talking about host country or foreign foreign jurisdiction okay so if this is the case in this case listed company or resident individual listed company or resident individual both they can make the investment so listed company and resident individual okay so this is the third avenue which will be treated as investment in opi okay so again we will just repeat this investment in units of any investment funds duly registered and regulated by the uh, duly registered and regulated by the regulator in the host country okay so there is a condition that it must be regulated by a regulator in the host country okay so if this such kind of foreign entity is there then in that case the listed company or the indian entity or the resident individual they are allowed to make the investment okay the next category of investment is if such investment funds is in ifsc okay we are talking about the same fund that uh, you know the investment fund if it is the funds is located in ifsc then unlisted company can also make an opi in the units of such investment fund okay so there is another investment which we will which will be considered as overseas portfolio investment okay so the next is resident individual that is ri resident individual can make an opi within overall lrs limit there is an lrs limit that is liberalized remittance scheme the current limit is usd 250000 per financial year okay so within that limit the resident individual can do the investment in the 
overseas portfolio investment. Further, in case of resident individual, if the investment by way of Swap Equity Share or ESOP or ESB that is Employee, employee Saving Benefit or Stock Option or Swap Equity Share up to 10%. So, if it is up to 10%, not more than 10% of paid up equity capital of listed whether listed or unlisted okay so the condition is there that resident individual can also make 10 percent investment up to 10 percent investment by way of sweat equity share or esop or esb of any company whether it is listed or unlisted of foreign entity that is the where the investment is being made and without control okay so the without control word is very important because if the equity is less than 10 percent because we have to very carefully analyze the you know the mode of investment because there is very thin line between the opi and odi so here the instruments are given that sweat equity share esop or esb up to 10 percent of paid up equity capital whether listed company or listed come listed or unlisted company that is foreign entity and the condition is without control shall be treated as opi this is the in the case of resident individual okay the next avenue for overseas portfolio investment is you can see okay overseas investment made by overseas investment made by mutual funds venture capital funds that is vcf or alternate investment fund registered with sebi in any any you know units that uh, prescribed by sebi okay so any security which is pre prescribed by SEBI and these uh, overseas uh, investment fund that mutual fund venture capital fund if they are registered with SEBI and the securities are you know uh, classified or uh, mentioned by the SEBI then such uh, these uh, entity they can also make the investment as OPI okay now we are coming to reporting part so before reporting part so i have already discussed the briefly the six avenue which will be treated as opi for this purpose okay now let us come to the reporting part so reporting first first part is reporting pri other than resident individual shall report such opi or transfer of such opi within 60 days from the end of relevant half year that is march end or september end so there is a reporting requirement of high half yearly for the person resident india other than resident individual so that this is uh, the reporting requirement is not applicable for resident individual so other than resident individual so the reporting requirement is half yearly and that should be done within 60 days from the end of relevant half year that is half year ended march and half year ended september okay so the reporting has to be done in this manner and for this purpose form opi has been prescribed for this purpose and the reporting has to be done through the consent ad bank okay so with this we are coming at the last part of this uh, topic now we are covering the limits for OPI. So uh, as, as you are aware that uh, for ODI there is a defined limit. So for OPI also that overseas portfolio investment, the limit has been prescribed beyond which the investment cannot be made in OPI. So for the Indian entity, that is IE, in case of Indian entity, 50% of net worth. 50% of the net worth as on the last balance sheet date. Okay. So the, the definition of the net worth is now section 257 of 
companies act 2013 so the net worth will be calculated as per the section 257 of companies act 2013 so this is the limit for opi for a person other than resident individual so basically that is for indian entity and for ri that is resident individual the limit uh, whatever limit is uh, they are having under the lrs they can use that limit for the purpose of opi okay and the same is available for odi as well and for lrs also so the total limit for a resident individual is given as usd 250000 the same limit they can utilize either for lrs or odi or opi friends uh, one more thing uh, which would i like to talk about that uh, the explanation which i think we have uh, just missed that for discussion so um, the, the there is one explanation given that opi to be considered as opi even after delisting of equity capital okay so what does it mean basically in the first mode of investment that is a less than 10% paid up equity capital of a listed listed foreign entity without control okay so suppose at the time of investment uh, when a person resident of uh, in, in india or indian entity they have made investment as a opi and subsequently this equity share it was delisted or it got delisted then also it will continue be as overseas portfolio investment so this is the explanation which was given along with the rules so now i thank you for watching this video thank you thank you very much